So you want to introduce someone to Rush for the first time, but you only have five songs. <laughs> So Rush has 20 or so studio records. They have several live recordings, a bunch of videos on YouTube, and you can only pick five songs to introduce someone to Rush. Which ones are they? The problem is, like I mentioned, there are tons of songs. So how do you pick the right songs? Well, do you pick your personal favorite songs? That might not be a good idea because maybe your favorite songs are from a lesser known era, let's say. They're more for Rush fans or fans of Rush that have been that way for a long time. Perhaps another option, you could go way back to the beginning when they were fresh, but that might be too far back and it may not be the taste of many people. So you really gotta go somewhere in the middle. If you want to introduce someone to Rush, you wanna present them songs that are contemporary-ish that still define who Rush is. That if someone were to hear Rush today that I've heard of them, they immediately identify that's definitely Rush. And that's what I'm gonna help you with today. These are the five songs you should pick if you're gonna introduce someone to Rush for the first time. And I'll give you the reasons why it should be these five songs, and then where to go from there. Number one, in a particular order, is Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer was released in 1981 off of their Moving Pictures record, probably their most successful record of all. And Tom Sawyer is the most recognizable Rush song. And it doesn't matter if it's your favorite song or not. Uh, for a lot of fans, it's not their favorite song, but for a lot of fans, it is. I went through a time where I got tired of hearing the song. And then I came back to it and I can hear it every day because it is a really great song. And Rush accidentally fell into that song being the most famous one, most recognizable of theirs. And even they didn't think it would be, but it just so happens that it is. It's been played on every tour since the record came out and it really just smacks the listener in the face as to the incredible musicianship that's displayed and it's just three guys. So definitely the first song you should use to introduce someone to Rush is Tom Sawyer. The second song you should play to a newbie Rush fan is The Spirit of Radio from the 1980 release Permanent Waves. The Spirit of Radio is a very interesting song because it's very happy. It's very inspirational. It has a lot of different time signature changes. It has a little bit of rock, it has a little bit of reggae, it has concert hall, it has spectacle, and it even has longing. And the song has been inter interpreted in many different ways, and it's really a nice lyrical song. The lyrics are great. When someone starts to get to know Rush, they'll notice that a lot of Rush lyrics are great. There's Neil Peart, arguably the greatest rock lyricist of all time, and they'll really see it in this song. And it tells a little story about radio, believing in the freedom of music, glittering prizes, salesmen, everything that was romantic about listening to the radio. And probably something that's lost today, because I don't ever listen to the radio. But there's something about that song that kind of inspires you to want to do so. It's a really fun song, has great musicianship as always, great guitar, great drums, great bass. And it's a really good contrast from Tom Sawyer. They're, they're very different songs, and it just shows the wide range that Rush is that they displayed in all of their songs. So a great number two song to introduce to a Rush fan is, or to introduce a newbie fan, is The Spirit of Radio. The third song you should use to introduce a newbie Rush fan to Rush is Limelight. Limelight is from, again, Moving Pictures, released in 1981, and it's a favorite of the band themselves. Alex Lyson has said that the guitar solo in Limelight is one of his favorite solos to play. And it's a deeply meaningful song, especially to Neil, who wrote about really the alienation of being famous and everything that comes with being famous. And it's a very moody song. It has a happier kind of vibe during the verses. And then during the chorus, it's kind of like moody, lonesome longing type it ebbs and flows it has a very good feel to it it has a very good tempo to it it's not a long song none of these songs are long and purposely so the melody is very catchy and without exception every reaction i've seen to limelight on youtube they absolutely love it so the third song to introduce a rush fan to is limelight the fourth rush song that you should use to introduce to a newbie rush fan is subdivisions subdivisions 
is from the 1982 release Signals. It's the first song off the album and it kind of birthed the synthesizer era for Rush. Now, before that, Rush used synthesizers, definitely. But before that, it was more incorporated as part of context and support in a song. Whereas Subdivisions was kind of different because the synthesizers were the main part of the song, actually the main riff of the song, the beginning of the song. And from that point forward, th synthesizers played a huge role in the sound of Rush and still close enough to moving pictures where it still has that contemporary sound, popular sound. It was played, it's a song that's been played on the radio. And again, the lyrics are very relatable to a lot of people. Just a very good, very well composed song from beginning to end. And it's a catchy song and most people take to it very well. It actually makes people think really deeply uh, when they hear the song, kind of like makes people very contemplative. And probably the first song on this list that if someone heard it for the first time, it would really start to make them think about what the lyricist is, is actually saying and what it means to them on a deep personal level. So again, my number four pick for songs to introduce to a new Rush fan is Subdivisions. Number five song that you should use to introduce to a newbie Rush fan is Free Will. Free Will came off the 1980 release Permanent Waves, just as our number two song did. And Free Will serves a specific purpose. Actually, all of these do. But Free Will serves a specific purpose. You notice we haven't played any we ha I haven't suggested any instrumentals to introduce to a newbie Rush fan, nor have I recommended any live versions of these songs. These should all be studio versions. And Free Will is gonna be the door to open up to both live versions of songs and also instrumentals. The song has great lyrics, and out of all the songs, it, this is the song where Giddy Lee really stretches his voice, hits really high notes, and of course, the middle instrumental breakdown is one of the best in all of Rush's catalog. This will whet the appetite for the instrumentals that you will likely introduce to your Rush fan after they hear these first five songs. The lyrics are great, the chorus is fantastic, it's catchy, and the listener will just be mesmer mesmerized again at the musicianship of these three players. So as you've noticed, I limited the five songs to a very specific era in Russia's music. Everything is really close to 1981 Moving Pictures. Reason being that that record Moving Pictures pretty much has defined Rush and it allowed them to really branch out into anything they wanted to do. Yes, in 1976, 2112 gave them the freedom to record music any way they wanted, but Moving Pictures really allowed them to explode on the music scene and really show everybody what they can do. These five songs also are very easy to listen to. If you go to the previous records, Geddy Lee's singing tended to be a little screechy at times. Uh, his voice can be an acquired taste for many people. I've seen reactions where it's very rare that I've seen people not like Geddy Lee's voice, but if you introduce them to their very much older stuff first, they might be kind of off put by his voice at least at first. Really during this time of permanent waves, moving pictures and signals, Giddy Lee really started to have lots of control over his singing, both in the studio and live. He was singing in a slightly deeper tone. Lots of times he was singing in his speaking voice and it just is easier to listen to, it's more pleasant. Listening to these songs will really whet the appetite of the first time listener to want to go back to the older stuff to see what else this great band had in their catalog. Well, what about all of the other stuff that came after that? Well, a lot of the records that came out after that are also acquired taste too. If you are a Rush fan already, most of you will already like the records that came out afterwards, but they weren't as catchy per se as Moving Pictures was, or even Permanent Waves and some of, sub some of Signals too. But of course, there's a ton of great music after Signals, of course it was. That's why they kept going and it culminated with Clockwork Angels, which was a masterpiece. So here's where I'd like to hear from you. Do you agree with these five songs? Do you agree that these are the songs that if you were to introduce Rush to a person who's never heard of them, would these be the five songs that you'd pick? Would they be five, they, would they be five completely different songs or maybe you'd change one or two of them? Leave comments below and let me know what you think are the five songs that you would introduce a newbie Rush fan to. I'd love to hear from you. So how do we get a newbie user to appreciate 
the really older songs and the much newer songs. That will be discussed in the next video.